Audible is audio entertainment that entertains, educates, and inspires. For you, the listeners of the Creep Geeks podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a 30-day free trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash cheap geek. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash cheap geek for your free audiobook. Enjoy this with your free trial. 30 days of membership free, plus two free audiobooks that are yours forever. One credit a month after trial, good for any book, regardless of price. Exclusive member savings, get 30% off additional audiobooks, easy exchanges. Go love a book, swap it for free, anytime, seriously. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash cheap geek for your free audiobook today. So it begins again. Welcome back to the Creep Geeks Podcast. This is the very first newest episode of, of the year. Yep. UFO disclosure in 178 days. Mystery at Blind Frog Ranch. 2020 paranormal recap. That's right. So we're back again. <clears throat> new year, new me, new you, mm-hmm. new everybody, right? <laughs> no, because we still got this holdover from 2020. It's like, come on, man. It's just it's like getting paint on you. You got to keep washing it and washing it. It's washing like that it last annoying person at the party, and you just want them to leave. Yeah, yep. or it's like if you go and you're like, hmm, let me smell this cologne, and you wind up soaking yourself with it by accident. And you walk around the store smelling like that stuff for the entire trip to your head, and you're like, it <laughs> sucks. You know, it's, that kind of, it's like that. 2020 is this stink. It's yep. on you. Just won't go away. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, if this is your very first time tuning in the podcast, we talk about all sorts of weird stuff. We talk about, you know, um, news, like weird news, and supernatural, paranormal, UFOs, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever you want to talk about. Tech stuff, space stuff, UFO yeah. stuff. But, you know, it is kind of what it is. And we talk about stuff we find to be interesting on the internet because that's kind of what we do. Yeah. And we do our own research and we do investigations and things like that. Uh, if you'd like us to come investigate your scary haunted house, just let us know. We have a phone number if you'd like us to do something like that. That phone number is going to be 575-208-4025. Yes. And it's one of those things where we will listen intently to what you say and decide whether or not we want to do it. Because it's kind of how it goes. Yeah. It's Lots a, of risk involved. It's a voicemail inbox, so please leave a voicemail and not a voicemail that says, hey, call me back. Yeah, and just so you know, we're uh, broadcasting out of our bunker deep in the mountains of western North Carolina, even though our phone number has a Roswell area code, because when we put, picked that phone number, we thought it'd be clever. Plus, we were still living in New Mexico yeah, at the time. Yeah, so a little bit less of a drive yeah. than it would be now. now. A couple different ways you can support the podcast. You can jump in and join the fun on our podcast page, because we have a couple of those. We have, what is it? We have the Creep Geeks podcast Facebook page. Yes. Uh, that's where you can see where we publish new podcast episodes as well as ad- additional like fun content. We have a Facebook group. We are trying to make that group grow. Please join that group. Pretty easy to find. Creep Geeks Facebook group. Yes. Yeah, so and we have a website. Creepgeeks.com. And we have a contact us form on there where you can do the same thing as if you called our phone number. Yeah, because if you don't want to hear your own voice and you just rather clickety-clack on the keys of your keyboard, you could do that and kind of leave us a little message there. If you'd like to be so kind, that'd be great. We also have an Instagram, a Twitter, and a Patreon. Yes, we do. We have all the means for you to contact us. And you can listen to us on any major podcast platform there is or ever will be. (laughs) I'm just saying, it's there. You're like, I wonder if these guys, yes, we're on it. Yeah. I'm not showing off or anything, but that's kind of how uh, really simple syndication works. The RSS feed, if you've got one, you can get picked up anywhere. Pretty much. Even Amazons. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of Amazons, we actually have a way you can support the podcast, too. If you want to buy something off Amazon, you're like, you know what? I need a Dutch oven. (laughs) I didn't get one for Christmas, and I don't want that fancy air fryer. I need a Dutch oven. You can go buy it off Amazon. You can use our link. Yeah. It's an affiliate link where if you click on it and use our link and you buy stuff, it doesn't change your price at all. But what it does for us is it gives us the ability to put gas in our albino rhino and keep the coffee flowing. Yeah. It's like a passive way to pat us on the back. No, just in case you want to go to that URL right now and support the show, it's going to be Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash cheap geek. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can go ahead and pull a little scrap of paper and try to write that down while you're driving in traffic. <laughs> right yeah but uh you know hey and all the stuff that we talk about are link driven and we have links for everything that we do talk about uh in our podcast show notes which we provide on our website yep 
and you can click and follow along with anything you want. So anyway, there we go. Enough self-promotion done. Yeah, housekeeping. Yep, I'm Greg. I'm Omi. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Yeah. Okay, so the other day we were uh, watching this show, and honestly we were on the lookout for it because it kind of ties in a couple things that Omi really enjoys. Yeah. Gold hunting slash watching people go hunt for gold, including the gold panning Mm -hmm. uh, attempts that we've made. Um, rock hounding geology. I just no, it's the gold part. Nobody likes rock hounding. Nobody likes the geology. I do. Up rock. You're like, ooh, look at this rock. I'm like, yes, that's a rock. <laughs> look at that rock. Boy. I will show him two very distinctly different rocks, and he's like, oh, that looks like a spaghetti rock, and that made me so mad. <laughs> I was so upset. Well, I apologize, not really, because it's a rock to me. You know, <laughs> hey, I pick up and show you dinosaur poop, and you're like, that's not dinosaur poop. Come to find out, I've thrown away more corpolite. Is that what it's called? Coprolite. That's what I said yeah. than ever before. He has thrown away more. Petrified uh, wood and dinosaur poop are the two things that I could readily identify. Single stones valued at probably about $40 a piece. Because you said that's trash. No. Not always. Mostly. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so, any okay, so there's this show coming on TV. It's already been on once. It comes on Fridays after the gold hunting shows or the gold mining shows that you have, like. Um, gold Rush. Go, yeah, whatever. I'm not going to name the shows because, you know. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, all those gold rush shows. And it's called uh, Mystery at Blind Fog Frog Ranch. Yeah. And what they're doing is, is they're tying in the idea that these people are going to go, you know, mine for gold on a ranch that's just outside of Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. Yeah. Uh, it's like literally right next to the Uinta Reservation, Skinwalker Ranch. It's like yeah, a little and these pocket are, right These there. are kind of like big ranches, so it's not like yeah. when you've got like 200 acres or something. So a lot of it's, it's pretty – so it's in the Skinwalker area and the Skinwalker Ranch area, and that basin itself is pretty pretty – weird there's lots of like ufo activities and skinwalker type stuff and there's an entire ridge line along the uinta basin that the uinta people pueblo those people don't even go to it because it's so scary yeah well so, and then, you know who, who knows why it is what it is or why it does what it does but if you've paid attention to all the skinwalker ranch and listen to george knapp talk on art bell uh, coast to coast and i'll say art bell's coast to coast because he started it <laughs> i'm sorry man i have a thing for it you know art bell right is the godfather of paranormal radio period there is no other way to say it in all these radio shows and paranormal shows and all these ghost hunting shows on tv and all that stuff was basically by him making everything that you watch on tv with this ghost hunting stuff and bigfoots and everything acceptable to talk about yeah Period. He did. I mean, this guy had more listeners at midnight on an AM radio station than Oprah did on TV in her prime. Oh, yeah. And that's a fact. So anyway, and it was later on inherited by uh, George Norrie. Yeah. Who's, you know, I, I haven't listened to Coast to Coast in like years. And I'm sure somebody's like, it's a great show. And I'm like, you don't even know. <laughs> so a lot of people think that, you know, I've been listening to it for two years. And it's like, well, you know what, man? I've been listening to stuff for a long time. been doing yeah. it for a long time. So. so I have my own opinions on things, of course, and I'll be more than happy to give them to you free of charge here at the Creek Beaks Podcast. <laughs> kind of what we do. So, so this show yeah. is a great show, right? It's going to have skinwalker stuff and gold hunting stuff. Mm-hmm. And the first episode, they're like alluding to it, like, oh, these weird, mysterious happenings. Well, they told the backstory, like their first um, experiences when they first tried to mine there. This is them coming back to this location to mine. Their first original experiences mining here involved very strange events, um, going underground, going into this cave that through certain types of gold testing and geology testing proved that it would probably have a wealth of gold. And instead, at the time during the original instance, they just had a string of bad luck and a lot of weird things happening. Yeah. So this is them trying to come back after failing once by to them no fault of their own to try and actually prove whether or not there's gold here so the first episode is them recapping what happened to them originally as well as starting to explore or at least like test the area and yeah, they've had things like equipment failures and all sorts of crazy stuff but the reason uh what they call the blind frog ranch is when they were digging through this 
a hole, and they opened up the hole, which led to an underground crevasse, right? Okay. Inside that crevasse was like a bunch of blind frogs, like 100,000 of them. Like everywhere they stepped were nothing but these blind frogs. So they decided to call it Blind Frog yeah. Ranch. Like they couldn't even see that they were there. The, the Well, the frogs couldn't. You'd have to move your boot and they'd, and they'd finally feel you and they'd hop away. Yeah, that's how frogs are anyway. Frogs generally don't give a crap <laughs> through there. But So this show is, is going to go through their endeavors to mine gold in a potentially dangerous place. And not, not just dangerous because of the possibility of paranormal and weird stuff going on because it's just dangerous in general Mm -hmm. and it's sort of documenting what's going on here and so i was like okay if this is like they're trying to mine on skinwalker ranch kind of a show it's going to be good yeah i don't know if it is or not to be honest with you we're one episode in and i'm not quite that impressed by the whole thing just yet the most impressive thing was during the first episode they had some equipment malfunctions all at the same time well they said that they did yeah did they really though? We don't really know, and I'm I'm, I'm trying to I'm going to be more skeptical in the year 2021. Okay, good. I mean, I've been I've been I'm always skeptical because I would always like to like you know let's take a look and see what's going on here and determine if you know what we're seeing is explainable or not. And you know, I'm one of these skeptics that says, okay, just because it can be recreated or explained doesn't mean that that's really what happened. True. You know, because I've seen a lot of shows where they're like, well, I can recreate it, so your experience that didn't really didn't happen. The way you said it did, Mm. you know, and I'm like, you know, and that's kind of goes back to when you look at like scientists and stuff that go, you know, way back in, in, you know, 1200 BC or whatever, they couldn't really do that because they weren't as smart as us. And it's like, you know, I'm finding out that ancient civilization is just as smart as we are in their own way. Mm. And I would never sort of, you know, think that just because we're more modern means that we could do it better. Like they swear up and down the pyramids were you know, put together and they have this, just because they can explain it doesn't mean the way the pyramids were assembled is the way that they were assembled. You know what I mean? They just figured out that they can take a copper saw and basically with laser like precision, cut a trough through a brick and then slice the thing. You know, it's like they, and and using sand, you know, let me give you an example because I feel like I'm running out of words to describe how (laughs) stupid scientists can be. Right. Yeah. For a long time, Roman cement, cement made in Roman times, has been vastly and far superior to our own cement that we currently make. Now, cement or asphalt? Or no, cement, cement. not asphalt. Okay. That's why I said cement. Okay. How dare you? I don't know. I know. That's why I said cement. Okay. It has been vastly more superior than our current cement. Lasts for a thousand years kind of stuff, right? And ours doesn't last that long. Even though we've uh, duplicated the recipe... And we're like, hmm, we don't understand that. In the recipe, for example, for Roman cement, it says use water. So when we look at that recipe here in the future, and we're like, oh, let's go grab some water. Well, to the Romans, because the recipe was for the Romans and the Romans at that time, they didn't feel the need to be specific. Because why? Because to them, water is water. They didn't specify drinking water. They just said water. And at the time, water was seawater or salt water. Hmm. So they made their... Cement with salt water. Oh. Which made it last forever. We were using regular water that you would drink. Because we're so smart. That's we are. That's obviously what they meant. Well, it's water, not salt water. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like when somebody made some cement with salt water and figured out, well, okay, geographically where they'd be located, they would not have large amounts of fresh water. They would be using ocean water. To them, it's just water. Wow. This cement's way better. Yeah. Because we're so full of ourselves that we think that we know. Oh, yeah, we know. I mean, we just found like what? Two and a, or was it 20 miles or some like large? Like, it's like a 25 mile stretch, stretch of like wall paintings, like, you know, the history of whatever, the like, history of history, you know, painted on these cave wall or uh, cliff walls. A canyon wall. Yeah. And in Amazon. Which is funny because, like, you know, for the longest time, we held off on visiting. Um, El Moro National Monument here in the United States. And the Amazon because they have snakes and stuff. Well, <laughs> here in the United States, you know, we put it off. We finally went with some friends and we went camping out there. And the part that's accessible to people, like easily accessible, is not that large. Nope. But if you think about it, at the time, the amount of writing that went on right there is still impressive. 
And here we go in the Amazon. There's 25 miles of it, yeah. you know? So, so that, the point to all that is, is that basically we think we're this, we think we're all that in a bag of shit and we're not. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, and to circle back to whatever I, what I forgot I was talking about, because <laughs> I have, I kind of forgot what I was talking about, of the Blind Frog Ranch thing. I still don't remember what I was talking about, but the show itself, it, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a little bit more skeptical because I'll be honest with you. When the Skinwalker Ranch show came on TV, it's like, oh yeah, it's gonna be good. I've kind of like, hmm. But I kind of want to compare what they're going through with Blind Frog Ranch and Skinwalker Ranch to see what kind of experiences they have. There's one thing about this show that I haven't seen enough of on the Hunt for Skinwalker or the the Skinwalker Ranch show. Yeah, and this show. It's in the first seat, first episode, they had some asides where they interviewed locals, and I really appreciated those because one of them people said some very out there stuff, like really like un, not unbelievable, but very disturbing things. Yeah, and it it half makes me want to go out there and talk to those people because it's just so scary, you know, um, or disturbing, I should say, and I want to see more of that. I mean, well, you didn't tell anybody what the person said, so what's the scary part? Like, okay, so UFO or non-earthly beings walking around, taking people. Yeah. Um, uh, certain elements of local government being aware of certain situations and letting them happen, cults in the area, things like that. Yeah. And I'm like... And this has been going on forever. And like the way the woman told the story, it's like it's still happening. Yeah. And I'm she like, also says the whole place is like a vortex portal type thing and it's been happening forever. And you yeah. Know, and you know, I'm okay with that. But the whole town is kind of weird in general. And the people are kind of strange because of the area they live in. And I mean, who knows why it is what it is. And but we're kind of used know. to that. Like we would go to places in New Mexico where everybody was a little strange. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of that could be explained, I would think, by a couple of different things, the distrust of people from everywhere else, and the fact that, you know, we've bombed New Mexico multiple times with nuclear weapons. Okay. Probably doesn't help. Um, so it's just kind of good to see kind of what's going on with it. Now, one thing I did find interesting is when I went ahead and did some real quick internet research. Yeah. Which took a while because we have a horrible internet here. Because <laughs> um, it is what it is, and it's, it's a geographic thing. Um I came across this little little blurb on above top secret yeah. dot com. Right. And it's a post that happened uh last year, January eighteenth, twenty twenty. Okay. You know, which basically said, you know, this could be yours for a mere twenty two million one hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars. <laughs> twenty minutes from Skinwalker Ranch, it's Blind Frog Ranch and covers a hundred and sixty acres. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And it also says, I have heard that the reported activity isn't confined to Skinwalker, but it's also in that general area. And the seller says, now as we are speaking, the owner of the property has underwater drones coming out of New Mexico or out of Mexico, Mm -hmm. right? To dive deep into the caverns of this vast underground water maze to film uh, what other commanders. Yeah. What other commanders around the world think. Is there a spaceship in this underground river? What? History shows us that there is something down there. Okay. Now, hold on. Just stop. <sighs> just, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's been one of the things. You know, that's been one of the theories that sort of ties Skinwalker Ranch to this place is that the reason why Skinwalker Ranch was bought by billionaires. Brandon Fugel, yeah. Yeah, and? um, Oh, yeah, Bigelow. Yeah, Bob Bigelow, right? Yeah. On behalf of the government and all that stuff and science experiments and everything that's going down at Skinwalker Ranch is because they thought that there was something there, too. And in the first season of Skinwalker Ranch show, they found a large anomalous thing underground using GPR, ground penetrating radar, right? Yeah. It looked like there was a huge mass of something under the ground. And they thought, oh, wow, and that's maybe what's causing this electromagnetic interference and everything from strange high levels of radiation and all this crazy stuff. So they started to dig. Yeah. And they went back to the area where they thought that this large something would be. 
And they were like, man, something's under the ground and all stuff. And they didn't really come up with anything. And then it's just sort of shifted to them, you know, going somewhere else and looking underground. And so thanks. So, it, you know, there may be a possibility of something being under the ground there. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty crazy. So I read that here and I'm like, oh, I can see the tie into Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah. And it's a sales page that has a letter, right, from the general and commander of the Spaceship Alliance from the United Galactic Federation of the Galactic of Herndon. <laughs> Okay. Or Hendon. I'm sorry. I thought it was Herndon, right? And it basically says, I'm sure I've seen this before somewhere, and I don't think it's connected, but probably just there to emphasize the UFO factor. In other words, let's hype up the weird stuff going on on this property so that maybe it'll sell at a much higher uh, price tag. Well, I just opened Calculator, and $22 million plus dollars divided by 160 acres means each acre is one hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars, one hundred thirty-eight thousand four hundred ninety-three dollars. Yeah, per acre. That I'm sorry, that's federal government prices. Yeah. So they're trying to get some some big low type money. That's what I think. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't but think. Uh, and in the link that we have in our show notes, <laughs> there is a link that takes you to homeranchsales.com, where it actually talks about. Uh, home and ranch sales, and one of them is the Blind Frog Ranch. Blind Frog Ranch, and it actually has like a photo album where it talks about you know Dwayne and the main dive site, and Dwayne's about to go in. The depth is you know depth is unknown. Uh, mapping of the caverns from space, the ponds at the caverns head water area. Um, there's an alert from October seventh, twenty nineteen that says. Um, the Federation has been present at the earth for approximately 40 years. As a result, our prime direct. So it, it talks about some pretty weird stuff. Yeah. And I like this for all you non-believers. Are there beings from other planets? Here is just the first letter of the many that will be released. This. And I'm like, well, you know, okay. And so I'm wondering if this show, you know, the blind frog ranch show, and all this information that's put up on this uh, amazing, amazing website, <laughs> yeah, is all part of that to drum up the idea of the show and get interest to it, and, and maybe sell the land at a much higher premium than they would get without it. But to be honest with you, I never even heard of the whole Blind Frog Ranch show. You know, like it wasn't like it was pumped out for months and months at a time and heavily advertised. It seemed like, you know, they did it for a month and then, you know, here's the first episode and it comes on at like Fridays at 10 o'clock at night after all the discovery channel gold shows. And see, I had done some snooping. Um, some of the people who are on the show, including like some of the, the geology experts and stuff like that. And they had posted photos like early 2020, late 2019, of them on location and on scene. But there wasn't much sale or pitch in those photos. They were just, we're on scene at a place in the Uinta Basin to yeah. find some strange stuff. No show names, no concept, no nothing. It was just them talking about it. And then literally, like, what, two, three weeks ago, we saw our first commercial and I saw my first internet ad about it, and that was yeah. it. Which is weird because you think people like us who, you know, if the algorithms are true, you know, we should be getting fed stuff like this all the time. And it just popped onto the scene. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. it's kind of a weird thing with the algorithm because, you know, we do social media, but at the same time, we, we try to protect ourselves from social media. So, yeah. I mean, who knows? But, yeah. But, I mean, they're talking about all sorts of things like strange tracks, you know, finding weird money portals, all this stuff, you know, yeah. and so the website itself is pretty interesting to look at, I guess, because of stuff, and there's a video in there, and the video uh, you can watch on YouTube, hmm. but I'm wondering if the show that is about to unfold over the season, and I don't know how many episodes it is or whatever, is just there, you know, it, it's like, did somebody go, hey, we want to do a show about your experiences at Blind Frog Ranch, because they've heard of this stuff or did or was it just going to be another gold hunting show which is interesting and then this came after so like which which is what like how did 
the Discovery Channel decide they're going to, or did this occur simultaneously because of the COVID nineteen and everything like that? Did they start filming this show like a year ago, and now they're done, right? And this stuff has sort of grown up and sprouted around it all at the same time. Or is this just an incredibly massive realtor campaign to sell some property that hasn't moved? <laughs> That's kind of what I just said. I don't know. Because it, I, I don't know how much it costs, but it's, I mean, how much it costs when they bought it, but in the, you know. Actually, that's, I think we found that. and I don't remember. Yeah, like a few years ago, it wasn't $22 million. No. No, at all. So I started kind of looking at it, and now I'm kind of like, mm, I'm going to definitely have to, you know, take this show with a large salt pill. <sighs> You know, I mean, because I want to be more skeptical because I am skeptical. In the 2021, I'm going to be even more skeptical. But like I said, you know, just because it can be explained doesn't mean that's what you actually experienced or that's what happened because that's the, the sort of the defining, deciding factor. Um, you know, if we ever do any kind of, like, looking into things, we're not one that says, well, just because I can explain doesn't mean that's what you actually experienced, you know. Yeah. Although with a lot of these, these webcam footages yeah. of home security cameras – I mean, come on. Most of what you're actually experiencing is a compression thing that's happening because of the, in other words, you know, a kid riding a tricycle that it just disappears and then reappears like eight feet later. That's not a ghost kid on a tricycle. That kid belongs to somebody. Compression and frame rate people. So yeah. Yeah. And Kodak. But anyway, yeah, not Kodak, Kodak. Yeah. So we're interested in watching the show. It's called Blind Frog Ranch. Mystery at Blind Frog Ranch. We, we so far think it comes on at 10 o'clock on Fridays on the Discovery Channel, wherever you watch the gold shows, where they run like three gold shows back to back. It's going to be um, in that mix there. And we hope it's just as, my hope is, is, is more creepy and more mysterious than the Skinwalker Ranch show that didn't really turn out to be that exciting at all. And I thought was supposed to come back, but evidently I haven't heard anything about it. So I don't really know. Yeah. Because one time I seen where it's like, you know, it's coming back and set your clocks. And I even set a Google Calendar reminder for us to watch the show, and it never showed up. Hmm. So I don't know. But it is definitely interesting. It takes the idea of gold mining and Skinwalker Ranch stuff with portals and aliens and all of that stuff and ties it all together. So what you actually have is like a creepy gold mining show, which ties two of our interests together pretty heavily. So. I thought that was kind of neat. But, you know, hey, when you talk about paranormal ghosty shows, you have to look at what's coming up next in our podcast. What? I have to scroll back where I can (laughs) find it. Okay, so with the COVID bill, along with only being stimulated like 600 bucks, which I think is a shame. Yeah. Because I think that, you know, as much tax money goes into everything that – People should get more. Mm-hmm. And if you want to argue about it, you can fight in the front yard. doesn't matter to me. I'm just saying that I think that a lot of people would use the help, you know, because I think that more money should go to the people than should, like, maybe go to the Smithsonian Institute, which is probably a top-secret paranormal ghost-hunting force that goes out there and claims, like, ancient haunted artifacts. I think maybe Warehouse skeletons. 13 that used to be on the Sci-Fi Channel is really... The Smithsonian. I've heard that theory before. Oh, yeah. Of course you have. Because yeah. we have two with giants and stuff. But, yeah. you know, maybe that's what their secret operating budget is. And they're out there fighting demons with Hellboy and all that stuff. Maybe it's all real. But anyway. With taxpayer money. <laughs> that's how they fund their stuff, man. That's how they fund it, right? Yeah. I mean, do you really think a toilet seat costs $10 million? No, but I also don't think it should cost paying a politician $130,000 just to decide whether or not Americans should get $600. So, yeah. 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 I agree. I think that people should be stimulated enough to keep things going. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. Anyways. So, in this last uh, stimulation bill, or the COVID relief bill, uh, there's some basically a little blurb in there that says UFO information must be disclosed in 180 days. Oh, 
and since this is a couple days old, it's now down to what? <coughs> Excuse me. Like 170. Yeah, it's up like that. Yeah. So there's, at the time of the, this article is published, a 180 day countdown is currently underway for the Pentagon and spy agencies to reveal what they all know about UFOs. And this disclosure started when Trump signed the latest COVID-19 stimulus bill. At the end of the countdown, the Pentagon and other agencies will have to reveal all they know about UFOs to the American public. Apparently, the provision was not featured in the nearly 6,000-word bill. Instead, it was added as a committee comment attached to the Annual Intelligence Authorization Act. In addition to stimulus, UFOs, and other intelligence, the bill also announces that illegal streaming for commercial profit will become a felony. So, is that a diversionary tactic? That kind of... I that last sentence kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> yeah, and see, that's kind of why I put that in here. It's like, okay, let's do a diversionary tactic. Let's say that you have to disclose all your UFO information there, government. And if you're illegally streaming, we're going to make it a felony. So, you, like, you know, it's like, look at this hand while this hand does something else. I mean, what's the definition of illegal streaming? Like, if I just- it says for commercial profit. Now, what I'm thinking is, is that maybe you're going to illegally stream a movie and charge people to watch it because you're going to do your own little outdoor drive-in, socially distanced, safe to drive-in movie and charge people four bucks. Yeah, that's what I was that's thinking. That's commercial profit. That's messed up. I mean, it was against the law before. I know. But why make it a felony? Hmm. Unless somebody got butt hurt about it. I don't know. Now, this makes sense because what's been happening since the COVID-19 thing? People have been like locked down, locked down, and having like streaming parties. Yeah, where you can watch like Wonder Woman. Yeah, in fact, one of our listeners he does that. He he logs in, and him and his friends watch a movie together. Well, he's a felonist, and they all provide commentary. Or hey, did you notice this about? He's going to be a felony. Stop, a felony. <laughs> poor guy. But no, but I mean, is that what it is? Because see, since Hollywood basically is you know can't really put all their stuff in movie theaters, which is probably great for them, which means they don't have to pay distribution, right? Yeah. Um, that all of a sudden, you know, well, hey, we don't want 20 people, you know, have a subscription to whatever it is, Disney. Yeah. Was it Disney? I don't know. Yeah. You know, we don't want 20 people watching it when that could be like, you know, $300 or whatever. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe that they don't want like, you know, you doing it for commercial. So is the commercial, what what, what determines commercial profit? You watching it with your immediate family for the subscription base through Disney? Is that is that one thing? Or do you like maybe own... I don't know, a bar. I can't say a bar. Bars are closed. Maybe you own some kind of facility where you have a subscription and then you're playing it on TV while other people are buying stuff. Is that commercial? Is it the same rules they use for like pay-per-view fights? Oh. Or is it because of pay-per-view fights? See, I, I don't know. I think. We, and the funny thing is, is that, yeah. you know, this is more, could be more damaging personally than the idea that we're not alone in the universe. Oh, that is a major distraction right yeah, there. Yeah, it's like, oh, shit, I don't want really, you know. Yeah. You have to pay an $18,000 fine because we watched something, a garbage Wonder Woman movie. When <laughs> it's, you know? We don't know if it's garbage. Oh, we, everybody's saying it's garbage. But we also don't know if, if everybody the, the government has proof of UFOs. It, hey, look, if everybody, <laughs> let's just say on the internet, if everybody on the internet says something tastes like trash, mm-hmm. I'm going to believe them. Here, taste this too. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, what's this taste like? If you tell me it's trash, I believe you. Because I've lived long enough so far that I can trust the idea that I'm probably not going to suffer having not tasted it. (laughs) Like, oh, you don't know what you're missing. I don't care. You know what I mean? It's probably not that critical for me to have tasted it. But this... So the distraction is the the government is going to release alleged documents... Well, they will allegedly they gotta, release they got to release what they got. But at the same time, if Karen and her book club decide to stream hey, together their, a, a movie based on... Let's not use on, Karen. That's a, let's. Any, anyways, if Karen decides to stream a movie with her friends and charges based them, off the book that they just read at their book club, that's going to be illegal? I, I guess. Maybe she has to charge them. That's... Or maybe they're going so far as to say, okay, maybe you own... Or maybe you have like a membership, like like 
like Patreon or something like that, right? And mm -hmm. you have the ability on Patreon to charge a membership fee. Mm -hmm. And maybe in that Patreon membership fee, you know, one of the perks is, hey, we're going to watch this movie together. I'm going to stream it, and you guys are going to watch and commentate on it. And so technically that would be commercial. We know people who do that. Yes, of course we do. This is the whole reason why I'm bringing this up. <laughs> oh, no. So if that's the kind of the delineation between commercial and non-commercial is the fact that somehow or another you're getting paid for it, maybe not directly like right then you're handing me two bucks to watch this, yeah. but since you have a subscription-based service, you're getting money for it that's considered commercial and that could be a felony. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe that's what that is because everybody's been locked down with this whole COVID thing and there are people that are, hey, come watch a movie with me or, hey, I'm a patreon and i'm going to show this movie and then we're going to talk about it all together and review it that would meet the same sort of uh criteria as maybe like a pay-per-view event that's not cool when there is obviously a difference between a pay-per-view event where yeah. the person pays like say 40 bucks for this event and just happens to let everybody watch it or it charges them like a dollar at the door you know whatever see what i'm saying there's so there's like what's going on here you know yeah I don't know. I so it was like, which one is going to hurt you more personally? UFOs or UFOs <laughs> or getting a, becoming a felonist. Is that a word? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it's not, no. <laughs> but maybe we should make t-shirts that say it. <laughs> maybe Hollywood's behind everything. Maybe Hollywood's behind this whole COVID thing. Don't. Maybe Hollywood's behind it all. In 2021, we're trying to keep our podcast. Let's not come out with those theories. <laughs> yeah. We don't want them to shut us down. We'll lose tens of listeners. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I seen that. And I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. You know, like, hey, you got until, you know, you've got 180 days to show us everything you have on UFOs and the UFO phenomenon. Oh, by the way, you become a felonist if you watch or if you do illegal streaming for commercial profit. Uh -huh. Now, I don't know because it doesn't really sort of explain what it is. And I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to read like a 6,000 word bill to figure it out. You know, I would I would rather watch a movie something. Uh -huh. So I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. So anyway, so uh moving into garbage. Yeah. Um, I did come across this article that basically says related to the story. Real easy, right? It wasn't that hard for me to find. It was like underneath this article that we just talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Aliens dump trash in our solar system back in 2017, claims Harvard professor. Oh. So I'm like, I'm going to click on it. I mean, why not? I'm already here. Yeah. So, a Harvard professor. Let's just say they're, I mean, he's a smart guy. Mm-hmm. You know, because he's, he's, he's in Harvard, right? He says that an alien visited in 2017 and more are coming. Okay. So, of course, you know, like I said, it was an easy thing to get to, so I click on it, right? Oh, we've talked about this guy before. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Basically, what it boils down to is he's talking about Umamao. Yeah. That long, cigar-shaped asteroid thing come whizzing through. His trajectory was what brought it closest to the sun, come whipping back around again. Yeah. And I realize that it's pronounced Umamao, and we've been saying it wrong. We've been saying, like, Umamao, whatever. Yeah. And then since it's such a weird shape, we didn't know where it came from. And there's all these speculations that, you know, it's alien technology. It's a probe. It's all sorts of stuff. This thing whizzed past Venus at 58,900 miles per hour, right? Sure. And it's like the object was first spotted you know, by an observatory in Hawaii. And that's where they got to, you know, they named it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so they, they named it Umu Aumau. Is what the guy says. That's how you pronounce it. So I can't do that. I'm just going to pronounce it in my mouth, right? Yeah. So as space travelers go, it's relatively small. It's about 100 yards long, but it was a big deal in the scientific community, and everybody talked about it. We talked about it multiple times. Yeah. They could never get any really good crisp pictures of this sort of thing. Um, and scientists were, like, trying to figure it out. They're like, oh, it's a comet. It's like a weird, extraordinary comet. And then some people were saying, you know, it's not really a comet. It's probably something alien related. And a lot of scientists didn't want to say anything because they're like, you know, I'm a scientist. I don't want to say a whole lot about this and speculate that it may be, you know, alien related or another civilization related because, you know, they don't want to lose their funding and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Um, but this this guy from Harvard's like, I don't, 
I don't give it. I'm going to say it. So, yeah. Now, here's what makes it weird. They're like this space craft, this weird unidentifiable thing that goes whizzing through our galaxy. It's like five to ten times longer than it is wide, so they assume it's a cylindrical shape. Yeah. Which, if you look at a, a flying saucer from the side, it looks cylindrical, too. Yeah. I'm not saying that's what it is. But... Anyway, so they talked about it. They've taken pictures of it. It, you know, it's come around. They've been saying what it was, trying to guess. It became a thing that we talked about quite indeed. But his whole point is, is that it may not be just the only thing we're going to see. That we're going to see more? Yeah. Okay. So they're saying, right? Yeah. Loeb and his, his colleagues there, because they started talking about stuff like, you know, how can this thing fly, like using a solar disc and solar sails to speed it up? Because that was a thing. This thing accelerated. It did some weird stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And it says that he and a colleague crunched the numbers and hypothesized that Umamao was not actually cigar shaped, but possibly a disc less than a millimeter thick with sail like proportions, which would account for its unusual acceleration as it moved away from the sun. Oh, okay. So they're like, oh, that's crazy, right? Yeah. And he also speculated that it could be space junk and that once observed, he says, the only way to look for alien civilizations is to look for their trash, like investigative journalists who look through celebrities' trash or through, like, archaeologists that dig through trash bits and stuff like that because that's where you find out a lot about yeah. the people that were there, right? Um, so in 2019... The Umamao team of the International Space Science Institute published an article in National Astronomy concluding that we find no compelling evidence to favor an alien explanation for Umamao. Hmm. Yep. And he says, and this is Loeb, he basically says that, um, you know, he's, he's been saying a couple different things, but one of the things he says is that some people do not want to discuss the possibility that there are other civilizations out there. And he also said... Uh, that skeptics are bending over backwards to assign natural origins to the object and the explanations they've given to explain its weird properties don't stand up to scrutiny. Okay. You know, because when we talked about the little bit of the acceleration this thing had, they're like, oh, well, the frozen hydrogen on its surface <laughs> is turning to gas, and that's driving it like a comet, except there was, like, no evidence of that. Yeah, and, it, and that's the thing, like, you know, Certain materials have been released on this from those researchers. They're, you know, they looked for the signs of gas or dust that might propel it, and they came up empty. So if there's no gas, no propellant, no driving force, then, I mean, we can go ahead and take Loeb's theories or hypotheses into account. Sure. So, I mean, considering his description of this thing as, you know, shiny metal or shiny metallic surface... It's it's plausible. Sure, shiny, hard, dense surface kind of a thing. Yeah. So, and it kind of goes back to what I've, we've been trying to kind of saying from the beginning of the podcast. We're going to be skeptical in 2021, but at the same time, just because we're skeptical and possibly have an explanation for the experience that you have or the encounter that you had, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's actually what happened. Yeah. Because this is what scientists do. They They try to explain something, and they explain it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what it is or what a, what had happened. Yeah. So, you know, but then when you say, hey, an alien race has made contact, even through its trash, that triggers a more serious search for more trash. You know what I mean? So if... if yeah, but like in the last podcast episode, we talked about trash in our atmosphere and how everybody mistakes it for something else. Yeah. Like the Black Knight satellite. Yeah. So now we've got to sift through trash and figure out what's trash and what's treasure from outer space. Yeah. So I don't know. And so the, the possibility is, is what he's saying is, is that, okay, so if this is alien civilization trash that come whizzing through here, there's a higher likelihood that we will see more trash. Right. Yeah. And he wrote a book, of course. It's called Extraterrestrial, and it's by uh, Avi Loeb. It says the, basically, he's talking about life beyond Earth because of this Umanao thing. And he says in his book, uh, should motivate people to collect more data on the next object that looks weird. And if we find another, 
uh, and we take a photo and it looks like a giant uh, or it looks like a light sail, I don't think anyone will argue with that. So he's been trying to say a couple different things. Other scientists out there are basically, like he said, bending over backwards to say something else. If this thing actually is a light sail, right, like the disc shape, shaped one millimeter sail that is giving us an aspect ratio image because these pictures were taken with like infrared cameras and not like a regular camera, that's not naturally occurring. And that would be proof that there is other stuff out there. Yeah. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Kind of an interesting take. <clears throat> so got some trash flying around. But the light <laughs> sail looks, you know, that's know, something I, we're currently working on. So who knows? It's funny because I'm trying to remember what recent science fiction stuff we've seen that featured light sails. Like, well, there's been a lot of shows. And I think it's most movies Past okay, 2018. Um, well, remember, well, hold on. What about that movie, uh, uh, what was it called? It was like Passenger. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Passenger had. I can't remember had, the names right now. No, that's what it was called. It was called Passenger. It had Rogue in it from X-Men, and it had Star-Lord in it from. Um, oh, yeah, Passenger. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that one. And there was a problem, and, you know. Was, but I was also trying to remember. Uh, was it the expanse? I keep thinking the expanse had a ship that had, I don't remember. I don't know. There's so, a yeah, but it, it, the light sail thing. I mean, that theory sounds interesting. It does sound like it's taken straight from sci-fi from the recent, from recent sci-fi trends. Be interesting if it turns out or pans out, I should say. Yeah. Well, yeah. the idea of solar winds and solar sails and stuff and traveling through space, that's pretty, pretty old idea. Okay. Um, as far as sci-fi goes, you know, I don't know. Thought that was kind of neat. So speaking of neat, yeah, um, let's talk about satellites, right? Because satellites that are out there and taking the pictures of the telescopes and stuff, and are taking pictures with the telescopes that are out there and, and gazing off into the universe to find stuff like space trash. Yeah. And radio signals. We've talked about radio signals before, including that one we had the exclusive on. Right. Remember that? No. We thought it was funny. Nobody, not not one person commented on it. Basically, it was like we uh, intercepted and translated the fast radio burst oh, signal, yeah. which was basically <laughs> a thing that says we want to be, reach you about your... I tried Ex- to vehicles shove extended that out of warranties. My brain. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Nobody cared. We thought it was fun. <laughs> we actually debated it. Like, well, if people think you know we're being serious, we might lose you know, you know people's trust. Yeah. And we didn't care. We did it anyway. We're like, I'll show you. Nobody cared. No, not one person. But anyway, remember watching the James Bond movie and stuff where they got this cool satellite dish, just like like on, on a mountain. Yeah. Like in a bowl looking thing. Yeah. That's in Puerto Rico. And it's the Arecibo Telescope. It's been around since the 60s and stuff. And it's like this you know, science telescope. It's in Puerto Rico. Well, it recently collapsed because it hasn't had any maintenance done to it and no upkeep for a long time. Yeah. Well, Puerto Rico, which is where it's located, um, basically has decided after it's collapsed because they, they tried to allocate some money and then it like collapsed like the next week. Oh, Okay. You know, so they're like, and this was in November 2020, uh, the telescope was slated for decommissioning, but then it went ahead and collapsed, right? So the agency that was overseeing Arecibo um, basically said, we can't fix this without risking human life because this thing has these huge, you know, cables and towers to support the the um, transceiver element that basically captures the information that goes in the the uh the dome and gets reflected back to it yeah but yeah they were like it's too dangerous for us to fix and we don't know if we can fix it so no money was actually spent to be able to do all that sort of thing and then all of a sudden they're like you know what puerto rico is going to devote eight million dollars to this device to get it fixed it's going to be a thing it's like we're going to put some money into it and they're like well it's not going to be enough money to actually fix it but it should be enough to to, to hopefully postpone the decommissioning of this, you know, it's an important satellite dish because a lot of scientists use it. Um, it's an instrument that's been you know, used for like five decades, and it's got all these, you know, astronomical discoveries and junk. 
but it was too little too late because the whole thing collapsed and made like a YouTube video and a bunch of other videos. And they kind of went out there showing the collapse of this, you know, Arecibo yeah. radio telescope. So, and they're like, oh, we're going to go ahead and retire because it's too dangerous. Then they had two two cables break and some stuff fell and just became a thing. And, and I, it, like, wasn't it like really interesting or like really good Good bad luck that they had a drone up when one of those cables and yeah. some stuff fell. That was kind of interesting. Yeah. So, luckily though, I guess Puerto Rico has now devoted eight million to the device um, to try to, I guess, repair it. But the report says the amount mentioned is probably not enough for the telescope to be fixed, although it could be enough to postpone the the decommission. That's what they hope. But yeah. see, then in early December when it actually collapsed. Yeah. Right. The 900 ton instrument base of the telescope fell about 450 feet Ugh. onto the reflector dish. This that little, you know, horn looking yeah. thing. And I mean, 400 feet, you said? Yeah, 450. I mean, and I dropped my iPhone one foot, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it's messed up. Can you imagine 400 feet on something that probably cost billions at the time? Yeah. So. And, and, you know, this is after they were like, we should go ahead and, you know, Let's retire it. Let's decommission it. But then they're like, "Oh, let's just see if we can get it fixed with some eight hundred million or eight million, you know, dollars worth of money." Oh, but man. the thing about it was, since I read this, they knew this thing needed work. Yeah, they knew it needed to be maintained. They knew it needed maintenance. They just they didn't do it. Right? Yeah, they didn't do it. And they're talking about you know the University of Central Florida's engineers found that even other cables, aside from the main cables holding the instrument, the main instrument. At signs of degradation. Oh. And so it, this thing was showing its age. It's been around since like the 60s. Yeah. And then you have, um, so the Puerto Rican governor, uh, Wanda Vasquez, she already signed an executive order to give the money and says it's essential as a matter of public policy. And the point I'm trying to make is, is that, it wasn't that critical until it became an issue, and then the issue became it's too dangerous, and it's too dangerous to be fixed, so let's go ahead and, and make some kind of like small offering out there to show, oh, it's a really important thing. In other words, it was like we didn't give a crap about it enough to maintain it and fix it and keep it optimally running, but now that it's about to collapse you know, and people are, are – paying attention to it now let's throw some money at it to make it look like we actually cared so it's too little too late it is and, and there's even a part of this little article where it basically says well, you know, we know that the eight million dollars is probably not going to be enough to fix it so we're hoping that the u.s the usa will donate hmm. to fix it oh. and it's kind of like you had it here the whole time you knew it was falling apart. You didn't want to put any money to it. Now that it's become a public thing and people are going, well, what's going on with it? And then you want to like do a little bit of $8 million and then you want to throw the comment in there. Oh, but maybe the U S will fix it. <laughs> and I read that. I'm like, come on, man. And see, you know, at one time there was a, a, a Navy base in Puerto Rico. There was a Navy base there for a long time. It was a refueling station. They had, you know, all sorts of stuff going on and it, it brought a lot of money. Mm-hmm. To Puerto Rico. It supported their economy. And then they decided they didn't want the U.S. there anymore, and they kicked you know, the military out. And when they kicked the military out, they actually thought that the U.S. Navy was going to leave all the, the fueling and refinery and stuff like that that they had because that's where Navy ships would pull in and get their gas. And, and they were angry that the U.S. would take all that fuel with them because they thought that they were going to – basically kicked the United States Navy out of the base that they had. It used to be called Roosevelt Roads and get to keep the spoils. Yeah. And they were super mad that, you know, the U S took the, cause gas is expensive. They took the, you know, the fuel with them and they were like, ah, and then here it is, you know, this thing that they should have been fixing and taking care of and paying attention to, you know, became a public issue. It just collapsed. It's not even worth fixing hardly anymore. And then they're like, Oh, but maybe the U S will donate the money. And it just kind of bugged me. It's like you you knew it should have been fixed. This thing is cool, man. Yeah. It's a, it was an important instrument. You know, been around since the 60s. It looks pretty neat. James Bond movie, all that kind of stuff. But it's like, oh. It's like you know your engine's about to blow up, and you're like, look what I washed the car. I don't understand. <laughs> you know what? 
it was just too little too late. You know? And there's other facilities there too. And they were like thinking about maybe using LIDAR. You know? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It just kind of bugged me. 57 years this thing was there. Yep. <sighs> okay. Gone. Oh, hey. We were going to put $8 million to it, but they didn't. They didn't, Omi. No, they didn't. They didn't. And now look at them. She always puts some money away <laughs> in savings. <laughs> no, it's fix your stuff before it becomes a problem, right? If you hear a rod knocking in your car or whatever, you hear engine noise, check your oil. Do the oil beforehand. Don't let it get to that point. Do some preventative maintenance. Okay. That's all I got to say. I'm done. That's it? Yes, sir. Podcast is done. What else you want to talk about? Well, we didn't go over our 2020 paranormal recap. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. 2020 was garbage. <laughs> well, it's funny that you mentioned that because this article does, you know, it's on Cult of Weird. It's the 2020 in review. We know other podcasts have done a 2020 paranormal recap. We're going to go ahead and just briefly go over one, too. But like you said, 2020 was a little bit garbage. Yeah, I guess we could breeze through a couple of these. Because, and, you know, we weren't going to necessarily do what everybody else does. But you know what? My thing is... Let's just do it. And my thing is, so it was... If you take an impartial look and stand back, some of 2020 was just not that impressive as far as the paranormal and weird. I That's mean, true. this article literally starts off with enough with the freaking monoliths. Yeah. I mean, that came up in the paranormal community as a big thing, whereas, you know, other things really didn't get the the eye they deserved because of the year 2020 it was. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the like, it starts off, the Pentagon admits UFOs are real. We talked about that. I hate when they say admits or the words believe, um, but it's true. The Pentagon did release footage and no one really cared about it kind of got overshadowed by other things going on in the yeah, world Yeah, because and I, let me tell you why yeah. let me be the bad guy here they didn't admit anything yeah and that's the real reason as much as this was hyped up by the new york times and everything else and the other ufo people out there they really didn't admit anything yeah I, but they said that they did and they actually had to go back and basically edit the articles because we actually talked about that yeah oh another thing we talked about um, and we talked about both aspects of this. Nature is healing. The Loch Ness Monster makes a comeback. Yeah. Now, because everybody has been, you know, stay at home, nature has made a return. Uh, you can see the skyline in China now. I mean, pollution's yeah. down. But also, rare species and cryptids are making a comeback. That's what they say. I know. I mean, we had done a podcast segment about how Loch Ness monster sightings were down but then in 2020 they finally got a little bit of a, a spike hmm. so that was cool yeah. yeah okay so nature's healing itself because humankind's not there and they actually seen porpoises and fish and weird stuff in the canals in venice which is yeah. one of the things that i remember um other stuff you know this is like a list of stuff that we're not going to go through There's, it's a yeah. l- long list of stuff like I don't want to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about <laughs> that. I'm not going to talk about mask or any of that stuff, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Russia claimed Venus because, you know, why not? <laughs> uh, a new Nazca line was found. Yeah, like I said, I didn't want to talk about that, so I'm not going to talk about it because it's a new Nazca line. I don't even know yeah. how many Nazca lines are there. I would rather talk about Russia, uh, radiation eating fungus found in Chernobyl. Yeah. Which I thought was pretty neat. And then right underneath that, scientists bake cake with bug butter. That's gross. Oh. You know, there's a lot of weird stuff that happened, you know. Forrest um, Fenn's treasure. Yeah, it was found. And Allegedly. Then, yeah. 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 And there's just all these sort of weird things that weren't really significant that sort of took some of the limelight away from other stuff. Uh, one thing I thought was kind of interesting is man was sentenced to death over a Zoom meeting. <laughs> Because That's you know, awful. I know, but it's like it is what it is, right? And yeah. so there's just there was just a bunch of them, and I started to go through, um, to try to pick some of the ones that I thought were really interesting. You know, like we should cover some of these because you know, these are pretty. Yeah, and it's just like, why? 
you know, 2020 was just a kind of a garbage thing. You know, you have like robo dogs. Remember we talked about the robot dogs that were. Yeah. In, you and like, I just agree because I think they should be respected. And, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, I don't know. And then, oh, the new Ford Bronco was supposed to come out. And then, you know, Spanish penis candle mogul accused of death by ritualistic toad venom. Okay. That, I totally missed that. We should talk about that. Evidently, this guy makes his money, you know, making them candles and stuff, and he was evidently killed in a ritual death using toad venom. Okay. That's some crazy stuff. You know, and it's just like there was just a bunch of these just sort of cringy things that happened in 2020. Like the Yakuza was banned from giving out Halloween candy. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Reopen theme parks, banned screaming. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, kissing the Blarney Stone was banned. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. You don't want to kiss that thing anyway. People True. pee on it. Yeah. Um, but then but, there's things on here that... Yeah, like woman shocked to learn she watered a fake plant for I two years. That. It's like, that's 2020 <laughs> right there. Just, you know... That should have been just the headline yeah. for 2020. And then remember how Redditors were using uh, astral projection to basically do better for the quarantine? Yeah. To escape it? Yeah. And it's just like you know, I went through and started looking at these things. You know, stuff like the bar owner that installed electric fencing to enforce social distancing. And, yeah. You know. Uh, oh, the man who isolated in a haunted town. That was a good one. He still lives there. It's yeah. A, it's a ghost town, and he's really popular on TikTok, but you know. The larger issue is is that Santa I, got caught in the power lines. Yeah. The one of the larger things that isn't talked about in this article is the fact that there was a renewed interest in paranormal and paranormal shows topped the charts when it came to people actively engaged in them, you know? Yeah, because of stuff like Bigfoot erotica author becomes U.S. congressman. <laughs> so it's true. like, you know, is, is good stuff. Is there like, oh, you know, maybe some more insight and new blood into the paranormal community gets offset by that kind of stuff. True. So, yeah. yeah. So it was a weird year. There was a whole bunch of stuff, and I really wasn't going to give it too much time because when you really kind of look at it, it's kind of sad Yeah. overall. And maybe it's just me. I don't know. And the Pope says to give up trolling for Lent. That's a that's a good one. I think trolling should just go away. Yeah. Stop trolling people. It's mean. So. Yeah. So, but then you see some funny stuff, and I will say this one I thought was pretty funny. Man in high-speed chase was teaching his dog to drive. <laughs> That's 2020. Dude. You know, we just had a high-speed chase in our, our county today. Yeah. And it resulted in, a, like, I think, like, 10 houses losing their, their, their mailbox two car wrecks, and then the dude spun out. But apparently, it took all afternoon to get this guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, like, surprised, but not surprised anymore. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. See, so basically 2020 was garbage. Yeah, I mean, you know, there was some good spots to it, of course, but uh, overall, uh Two stars do not recommend. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's not all I got. Okay. Well, if that's all you got, we'll go ahead and wrap up the show. Uh, everything we do talk about on the podcast, you can find in the show notes for your podcast download or on our website, creepgeeks.com. Our show is supported by our Patreon supporters. We do want to thank Dave, Isis, James, Bobby, John, and John, and Adam for supporting us throughout our podcasting endeavors. If you'd like to support us as well, you can go to patreon.com forward slash creep geeks and join our Facebook group. I'm really pushing that because that's a thing right now. So join us on Facebook. We have Creep Geeks Facebook group as well as our official Facebook page, Creep Geeks Podcast. Um, can't really think of anything else to say. No, that's about it. It's first yeah. week in 2021. And it's already weird. Yeah. And it's probably going to be that way. I guess we're going <laughs> to. I kind of hope not, you know, because like many others, I hoped the magic bell would ring and it sort of reset things. And, you know, we kind of go back to being uh, better than we are now. But it looks like that's probably not going to happen right no. away. No. It might. It's going to take a while to get the stink of 2020 off of us. Yeah. Let's just cross our fingers and let's just cross our eyes and dot our t's <laughs> no, cross our fingers and hope for the best yeah okay maybe we won't get any more headlines like seven dead after drinking hand sanitizer oh and jesus well it is starting to look up i i've heard a couple of festivals are back on schedule so 
you know, maybe we'll have more opportunities to meet more weird people. Probably not, but hey. you never know. I'm not holding my breath. Anyway, so uh, we do appreciate you listening, though, for real. And we do uh, invite you to come back and listen again. Uh, I think that after 204 episodes, it's fair to say that we're not going anywhere. True. So whether you <laughs> like it or not, it's all good. Yeah. So anyway, a question, though. Uh, would you rather hear the podcast on Fridays or Mondays, or does it really matter because you just download it and listen to it when you can? Hmm. Hmm. Good question. Yep. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. So anyway, give that some thought. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. We have a phone number for you. You can give us a call or you can jump in on Facebook and say hello. Yeah. So, okay. So anyway, see you later. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye.